Before we even think about putting the bed plate back on the car, or I guess on the 156, because the car is clearly pretty far from the engine, um, we need to consider the two different bolts diameters we'll be using and the torque specs for each of those. So there are two different torque specs and there's four different types of bolts. There are M9s and M10s. You can kind of tell that the inner ones are slightly larger than the outer ones. So these are gonna be M10s and these will be M9s. The two have different torque specs, which I'll put on the screen right now. I took a picture of the uh, WOS or WIS instruction manual, and I'll put that over here. Um, but like I said, nine stage process, you're essentially doing the same thing, but twice. And the specs are slightly different for the M9s and the M10s, which is gonna make things absolutely confusing. So keep track of things and make a little diagram, write in what type of bolt they are and each of the torque specs for all of those, just to make our lives more easy in the long run because the last thing you want to do is either under torque or over torque because that can cause some major issues. We definitely don't want that to happen. It's crucial that we have everything correct. In the meantime, I'm going to boil some water, I think, at least heat some up and then put uh, a uh, put one of these sealant tubes in a Ziploc bag and uh, kind of dump it in some water and warm it up to make it uh, easier to apply because we're getting to that point where it's almost time to apply the sealant. So. Got to make sure we got that good to go, but first I get the diagram sorted. All right, this may look daunting, and it is. So we have, <laughs> like I was talking about earlier, this diagram is supposed to mimic this pattern over here with 20 bolts. The outer outer bolts, like I mentioned earlier, are M9s. The inner ones are M10s. The M9, essentially you do 20 newton meters, then 32, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. Then you release it till there's no tension. They do the exact same thing again, but it has to all be in order every single stage. So there's nine stages for 20 bolts. So that's going to take some time. Um, so definitely prepare yourself for this uh, mentally and also physically because this will be difficult after a while. Nine stages is quite a lot, um, but this is certainly not something you want to go wrong because it is very important. Um, but first, before I even touch this, before I touch the sealant even, um, I have to make sure I have the right bolts that go in the right spots. Like I said, I think I bought four different types of bolts. Two of them, there were eight of each, and then two of them, there were, uh, what was it, two each or something like that? Yeah, that should add up to 20. Um, if my math isn't, my math is mathing, then that should be correct, which I think it is. Um, let me go check out the new parts, and then I'll put the new parts in the corresponding places here. All right, so I've been matching up the new bolts with the old ones. What's pretty cool is you can actually visibly see how much they've stretched out, um, the old ones compared to the new ones. So for example, if you take out this one, this is one of the M9s, one of the shorter M9s. There are only two short M9s. So um, basically you can treat the first four rows from the trans to the front as identical. Um, you have the same M9s on the outside and the same M10s on the inside. It's the front row. The front row M9s and M10s are both shorter and then the respective counterparts. So you can just see, now if I line these up as well as I can up top, you can just see that the old one is ever so slightly longer. And that's because when they were originally torqued down, they're designed to stretch out, which is why it is absolutely necessary that you use new bolts. You cannot reuse these bolts, I cannot stress this enough. Um, so that's kind of why you can see you had to use new bolts. So I was going to put in all of the new bolts into my little diagram I made over here, but now that I realize that they're all exactly the same, just except for the front four, I'm probably not going to do that. I'm just going to basically keep the uh, unique ones in the front, and then I'm just going to put those ones in the correct place when the time it comes. But now at this point, because I know where they all need to go, I'm really just going to get the silicone ready and start applying it. We now must prep the surfaces, so both the bed plate side that faces the block and the block itself, we've got to rub down with some brake clean and make sure it's all cleaned up and good to go. And then we can put the sealant on the block side and then put the bed plate back on very carefully and gingerly as to not damage anything. Um, one thing I found kind of odd was I found this Mercedes video posted online for technicians clearly um, that uh, outlined putting the sealant on the bed plate cover first. But when I looked into WIS, WIS had a diagram of just the um, crank, as with the block, sorry, with the block, and it had a labeled sealant path. We'll put that picture right over here. With how the pathway seems to work, it would certainly make more sense to have the sealant on this side, because it has to go around the O-rings and also around that little piece over there. 
So I think I'm gonna follow that one instead. It's gonna be the same thing either way pretty much, but this one allows for more accuracy. So this one I'm gonna put it on the uh, block side first. It also makes more sense because if I need to grab that thing to put it on here, that's pretty heavy by the way there's a good chance of messing up the seal. So I actually might have my dad come out and help me place it on the block again, just so we get it perfectly straight on there and not damage anything. Really wishing I knew main bearings right now, but it is what it is. Just put a little bit of oil on them just to make sure they don't go on completely dry. To the crank, got my lighting set up right now, which is pretty interesting, but uh, time to get the silicone seal and start going. I'm warming up the very special Mercedes sealant in a warm cup of water with a Ziploc bag just to make it easier to dispense because this stuff is pretty stiff. Mercedes has a specific caulking gun or I guess sealant dispensing gun that they sell for about 150 bucks or maybe more than that, I can't remember now, but uh, regardless of the price of that outrageous glorified caulking gun Mercedes sells themselves, you can actually use a normal caulking gun. I actually have a high tension or at least high force caulking gun here, I think it was 9 to 10 ratio. I'll put that in the description below for about $10, $15, and it does the job perfectly fine. You can see I actually use the black part of the um, Mercedes sealant, and I actually have that pushing down it with the caulking gun. So it does a really good job. Um, it gets your sealant out nice and smoothly. Not heating this up would have made the 2 millimeter bead nearly impossible, that's for sure. This part has the challenge kind of messed up a little bit, but... As you can see, I am quite literally just following the exact same path that I showed you guys earlier on my phone. Um, it is pretty self-explanatory once you get the hang of it. Um, I did buy about two or three tubes of the sealant just in case I needed more. Um, and with the front cover coming off, that was definitely going to be necessary, at least having two tubes. I don't think I used the third one at all. For the bed plate, I believe I only used one, but better not to take that chance and I would just get two if I were you. And here comes the bed plate, the star of the show. Now, the thing is, you don't have that much time to actually put it on once you apply the sealant, so best to get that done uh, pretty soon after you apply the sealant, because think about it, you've already applied half the sealant, it takes some time to apply the other half, um, so once you get the bed plate together, it, it'll probably be time to put it on. One little detail before I continue on. You see that little part of the bed plate that's perpendicular to the block? Well, that piece should be sealed if you are not removing the front cover because that part actually seals against the front cover and you gotta make sure you do seal that part. Now in my case, I'll be taking the front cover off anyways, so I don't need to seal that right now. I'll just do it at that time. Um, but important to note if you guys are just doing the bed plate. All right, time to start putting bolts in. At least get them started before we start this very tedious torquing procedure. It's also pretty important that all the bolts are first of all clean and oiled. These bolts should be pre-oiled when you pick them up from parts or whenever you get them, but for some reason some of mine were and some of mine weren't, so not always what you want to hear, but we'll make it work. And I'll have to get some motor oil that's spilled out of this thing, so some fresh would be ideal, but it's all Just want to make sure they're threading in nicely. I'm not even going to put any sort of torque on them. Just want to make sure they are aligned, which it seems like by going by hand they all are. Can never be too sure though. So just do this a few times. Better safe than sorry, as they say, right? Well, folks, I'm liking how this is going. Just gonna thread in the outer bolts now so that we know they all go in. A few moments later. All right, so I have my digital torque wrench here. It's time to start. The tedious process of doing our nine stages on 20 volts. I'm going to keep this guy right in front of me. You guys saw it earlier. So of course the first bolt we're going to do is going to be this one here. What I want to do right now is use my electric ratchet to get that guy basically flush. And then I will start using the digital torque wrench to make sure we get our correct value. All right, so this is the one over here. Yeah. 
If you guys like this video and all my content so far, check out sta-industries.com and check out all the German car apparel I have, especially on 1.5 stick stuff. I have license plate frames, cool hoodies, sweaters, high quality stuff with nice embroidery. Check it out, you won't regret it. I'm always posting new stuff on the website, including ML stuff coming soon, specifically ML63 engine rebuild stuff, as it's pretty relevant to what I'm doing right now. Um, but yeah, check out what I already got in there. Lots of Clone 156 stuff that I really enjoy wearing while I work on my cars. There is also other Mercedes stuff already up there, like for my SL500, M119 stuff, including a lot of BMW apparel as well, so go check it out. where it really gets fun because now for the second stage the torque is actually different between the M9s and M10s as I said before. So the M10s had to go to 40 Newton meters but the M9 will go to 32. So we're in the exact same position. Number one over here, two and so on. So we're going to first do these to 40 Newton meters. Time for stage three. Let's give it up for stage three. Woo. Quite literally an hour later, I have finished torquing all the bolts. Now I stopped recording because my camera battery was getting low. In fact, that's why I'm on my phone right now. But uh, wow, that was quite a task, but it's now done. And now I kind of understand why each bolt is between 40 and $60. Now, I'm sure it's still way overpriced, but at least it kind of makes sense with how much torque you're applying on each of these bolts. Um, it's kind of cool. As you torque down the bolts, you can see some of the sealant sort of squeeze out, which is reassuring. It means you put enough. I was kind of worried there for a minute because when I first put that two millimeter thick bead, I was like, huh. You know, when I put the bed plate on, it wasn't really um, coming out of the sides, and I was kind of worried about that because the previous one sealant was. But once you torque it down, it starts poking out just like the old seal did, and so you're pretty much all set at that point. I'm going to let this kind of cure for a bit. I also need to break because my arms are tired. Let me just tell you, cranking down that last 90 degrees on each of the bolts is, is quite a workout. So definitely be prepared for that. Um, that's a big job done. I think I'm gonna go take a break, eat some dinner, um, and then we'll take the front cover off, which is pretty much ready to come off aside from some bolts. I might flip the engine, not sure yet. Making good progress. Almost forgot to mention, I already did torque down the rest of these bolts as well. Pretty much they're all 20 to 30 Newton meters. The really important ones are the main bolts. The rest are pretty much just standard bolts. You can see it's starting to come out, which is just what we want. Should probably be careful because I've already removed that top piece that this doesn't fall. Let's see. Looks like we're almost there. Yep, here comes the pin.